If any of you are aspiring writers, you needn't worry. It's not this bad. Not all the time. Who knew writing could be so hard? Not the Coens, apparently, since it took them three weeks to get this thing done, and they were still working on Lowe's Crossing, a case of writer's block. Barton Fink is the best work of the Coen brothers I have seen thus far. As I mentioned in my Miller's Crossing video, if you saw it, which, by the way, thank you, uh, these are two of my least favorite filmmakers. But for some reason, these two films just struck the right chord. I'm hoping that continues, but I wouldn't hold your breath if I were you. What works here most is just how organic and natural everything feels from the dialogue of the actions, despite honestly being made up. You really feel like you are going on a journey with this character, and you want to know where it goes. You are always guessing, at least I was. The hotel Fink is staying at is also just a character unto itself, and there's a lot of symbolism embedded into the general vicinity. And I'm not going to spell it out, but just watch the movie and you'll see. And I don't mean, like, just watch it. I mean, really watch the movie. John Goodman, in my opinion, gave his best role in a Coen Brothers movie that I've ever seen, and he and Turturro played up one another really well. Turturro is also just fantastic by himself. I mean, he's a very gifted actor, and when under good direction, he shares that gift. One of his best roles. There's also a few side stories going on. One that involves a well-renowned writer, and one that involves Goodman's character. Both add another layer to the story, and also just go to prove the idea that the nothing in Hollywood is as it seems. And there's also an item of interest at the end that may bring some, remind some, of Pulp Fiction. And after some serious thinking, I am in the 90s range convinced that it houses Barton's creativity, so to speak. It diffuses his writer's block. From a directorial standpoint, Joel Cohen does an incredible job, and his framing along with the overall look of the film really complement the production design by Dennis Gassner. The performances, besides the two leads, are uniformly phenomenal, and the ending is quite provocative. Gets you thinking. The wheels turning. My only problem with it is that it felt just a little long. Not too long, but if like 10 to 15 minutes had been sliced, it would have been perfect. For me, at least. If you are, like me, not a fan of the Coen brothers, which I doubt you are, but all the same, if you are, I would still seek this out at some point. Because I damn near loved every minute of it. And that's saying something. It's very strange, but very good. And for the right price, I would buy it on Blu-ray. Four and a half out of five stars. Thank you very much for your time. Have an awesome day.